Nine questions to ask your INFJ friend to get to know them. If you've ever been fortunate enough to know an INFJ, you know they're the kindest, most generous people you could hope to know. They get a kick out of assisting others in reaching their goals and will do anything they can to see you succeed if given the chance. The joy of knowing an INFJ is amplified by the fact that they are perceptive, inquisitive, creative, and fearless in their pursuit of novel solutions to problems. In fact, they prefer to foster distinct talents and opinions, which makes them fun people to be around. These are just some of the reasons why INFJs make wonderful friends. INFJs are introverted and like to keep to themselves. They are not the type to open up about their innermost feelings and ideas immediately away, nor are they the type to engage in mindless small talk about anything from their day to their future aspirations unless specifically asked. One of the finest ways to break through to an INFJ and establish a more meaningful relationship is to ask them thought-provoking, open-ended questions. In spite of their reluctance to share personal details at the outset, they are likely to welcome such an approach and find the ensuing dialogue engaging and enriching. Listening to their thoughtful comments can give you great insight into who they are as a person without putting them on guard or making them feel awkward. Without a doubt, you'll think of at least a couple of questions off the top of your head that you'd like to ask. Here are nine more questions that the introspective INFJ will like thinking about and answering to help draw them out even more. What would the main plot of your ideal novel be? Among all personality types, INFJs have the highest aspirational rate for becoming authors. Most people have novel writing aspirations, are actively working on one, or have completed one. Inquisitive and contemplative INFJs are brimming with thoughts about society, culture, history, psychology, nature, and a thousand other themes that they'd like to convey in written form as storytellers and aspiring creative artists. Almost always, an INFJ will give you a deep and interesting answer to your question of what they would like to write a novel on. They will be flattered that you took the time to think about who they are and what they're about to do, and that you cared enough to ask them that question. To answer our second question, can you tell me something about yourself that you've never told anyone before? For the reserved INFJ, this can be a difficult question. If you wanted to tell them something shocking and unusual, they would listen intently. When you switch feet, though, you may find that they are not quite as cozy. The INFJ worries that others won't be understanding if they show a piece of themselves they've kept hidden. However, it is still a nice question to pose to your INFJ pal. Assuming you listen to them without passing judgment, showing empathy, and showing gratitude for their trust, they will feel relieved and accepted after sharing their secret with you. They, like everyone else, have a need to talk about everything in their lives, and if you're attentive, they'll feel much better about their decision to do so and about you. Question number three, what motivates you? Asking an INFJ about their deepest desires is a certain way to get them thinking in Myers-Briggs terms. If they are acquainted with the 16-type Myers and Briggs personality typing system and accept its premise, they will customize at least a part of their response to what they know about being an INFJ. But they will probably explain how they are more complicated than that and give you a list of reasons why they believe the system doesn't properly reflect who they are. Whether they answer within a 16-type context or not, your INFJ friend will offer you a deep and complex response to this topic. That reaction will be informative for you and help guide your actions and suggestions in the future. Question number four, what do you think motivates me? When it comes to understanding what drives, motivates, inspires, or restrains other people, INFJs are utterly engrossed. They aren't reluctant to dive into psychological supposition when examining their partners, and their intellectual sleuthing skills are usually fairly advanced in this area. If you ask an INFJ friend or colleague this question, you could be taken aback by the clarity, thoughtfulness, and precision of their response. You could even wonder if they've been reading your mind, considering how precise and on point their observations seem to be. Along with being amazed by their knowledge, you'll gain crucial information into how your INFJ buddy perceives you and the state of your friendship. The fifth question is, what are you most worried about right now? If you ask an INFJ this question, they can respond in one of two ways. They can make it their own by relating it to events in their own lives. They can either deal with it in isolation, ignoring the bigger issues facing society and mankind as a whole, or they can do so within a grand scheme framework. Your INFJ friend is always game for a deep conversation, and they'll relish the opportunity to do so if you bring up a topic related to broader social issues. If they get more personal, it's because they're starting to open up to you and value your input on how they should handle a challenging situation. Any response they give you will, from your vantage point, shed light on their thoughts and feelings. Sixth question, have I done anything to disappoint you? An INFJ's emotional intelligence makes them vulnerable to hurt feelings. They may take criticism personally, 
and have a hard time realizing that those who disagree with them aren't dismissing them as a person because they have a different point of view. Unfortunately, INFJs have a general aversion to battle. So when they're sad, they try to bury or ignore their emotions. That's why they're more likely to bottle up their feelings if they've been hurt or confused by something you've done rather than express them openly. Only by getting people to open up about how they really feel, without fear of repercussions, can you hope to learn about their weaknesses and sensitivity, and use that knowledge to make amends. Question number 7. Have you done anything to displease me? Because of their high levels of empathy and compassion, INFJs frequently experience feelings of guilt or regret when they think they may not have been as kind, helpful, or polite as they may have been in a given situation. A person whose primary goal is to improve the world and the lives of those closest to them might be quite hard on themselves if they feel they have failed at this. When asked why they didn't help you out more, an INFJ friend may give you a laundry list of excuses. You may reassure them that you value their friendship and support and that you haven't felt betrayed or mistreated in any way by them if you give them the chance to talk about it. It will be greatly appreciated, and the chat will provide you wonderful insight into how your INFJ sees themselves and the world. Question number 8. If you had to do it all over again, what would you change? The INFJ is predisposed to have regrets, and at least some of them will seem meaningful from their vantage point because of their unique personality. If you're an INFJ, you probably spend a lot of time thinking about what could have been. Maybe you're not sure if you made the right decisions, or if things would be better now if you'd done X, Y, or Z. They tend to dwell on the past and play out alternative scenarios in their heads constantly, demonstrating a strong sense of nostalgia. INFJs are enthusiastic about life because of all the exciting possibilities for personal development and expansion that it offers. However, the downside is that they won't be able to do everything they want because of limitations on their time and resources. If you can get them to open up on this topic, you'll discover a lot about what drives them and what improvements they wish they could make. Question number 9. What do you think I should do? If you have a problem, an INFJ friend will be anxious to provide you their advice and support. When you are feeling down and unsure, they will welcome you with open arms, and when you are faced with a challenging choice, they will offer well-considered advice. When you show a desire to seek out their advice, it will deepen the bond between you and your INFJ partner, giving it a whole new depth. Once they've established you as someone they can trust, they'll come to you for guidance when they're in a bind or don't know what to do next, and you'll learn a great deal more about them as a person. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to subscribe and hit notification bell so you will be notified whenever we upload a new video. Remain better.